It was at lunchtime when the bomb went off, cutting down shoppers waiting at a bus stop in a Fula town centre. It's believed that the bomber himself was among the eight who died. The attack was timed to mark the end of the Islamic mourning period for the victims of the Hebron massacre. Whoever planned the bombing took plenty of casualties, at least 50 people injured, many of whom suffered lucky escapes from death. I ran away. I ran away. You see my clothes uh, became burning. And uh, in this moment, I didn't uh, remember what's happened, you know. At Afula's hospital, they couldn't cope with the stream of casualties. Helicopters were used to ferry them to other places. Hamas, the hardline Palestinian group, claimed responsibility for the attack, which has touched off anti-Arab protests across Israel. Many people had predicted that this kind of attack would follow Hebron, and the Israeli government is already saying that it won't allow these latest deaths to deflect the peace process. Mark Urban, BBC News, Afula. and another Palestinian strikes at another Israeli bus stop. This time, a gunman who mowed down commuters with a submachine gun. One Israeli was killed and several wounded before the Palestinian was shot dead. It could have been much worse. Several full magazines and a knife were visible beside his gun. The survivors were taken to hospital, where normal life was brought to a halt by the siren marking Holocaust Day, a commemoration of those killed by the Nazis. Elsewhere, there were two stabbing attacks on Israelis. The hardline Palestinian group Hamas has promised more. At that same moment, the Israeli political elite were marking Holocaust Day with a wreath-laying ceremony. There have been few public statements about the Palestinian attacks, but privately Israeli ministers are known to be baffled and angered by the absence of any condemnation by Yasser Arafat of yesterday's bomb attack, which killed seven Israelis. In Afula, they buried those victims, including three schoolgirls and their teacher. It was bound to be a day of high emotion and tempers flared when a deputy government minister paying his respects was attacked by mourners. Afterwards, those same feelings of anger with the government and its plans to make peace with the Palestinians were vented on the town's streets. Just before nine, at the height of Tel Aviv's rush hour, the bomb ripped apart a commuter bus. An amateur cameraman recorded the scene in the moments afterwards as a dazed woman was helped out of the smouldering wreckage. It had happened in Dizengoff Street, the city's commercial heart and a place where people normally sit in cafes and relax. Today, though, the bloodied survivors and those in shock stumbled onto the pavement as passers-by came to their aid. Many were killed instantly, dozens injured. The scene bore witness to the force of the blast. Sections of the bus had been scattered around. Aya Kedar was woken by the explosion and rushed to her balcony. I didn't want to believe that under my house there is a bomb. And when I realized it's a bomb, I, I started to cry because it was the first time I saw it in, in Tel Aviv. The Islamic radical movement Hamas has claimed responsibility for the explosion, the latest in a series of attacks aimed at inflaming Israeli public opinion and derailing the peace process. I was crying, I was very shocked, and I saw people running and nobody knew what to do, and passers-by were trying to help. They came to me and they said, sit down, and they brought me water, and they tried to bathe me, and I said no because I had pieces of glass on me. With so many injured, the supplies for transfusions began running low and people answered appeals to give blood. The Islamic group Hamas claimed responsibility for the deadliest terrorist attack in Israel for 16 years. Police combed the wreckage trying to prove their hunch that the person who took so many lives was a suicide bomber. Often Hamas bombs have been crudely made, but this one went off with devastating force. Bits of the bus hung from power lines. Elsewhere, people gathered human remains, trying to bring some religious dignity to those whose lives had ended in a flash of high explosive.
Israel's opposition leader linked the bombing to the Prime Minister's recent decision to lift restrictions on the movement of Palestinians. Mr. Rabin chose to disregard my warning. He chose our fight over the security of the people of Israel. And I think he uh, must realize that he must change his policy immediately.